Amen. Welcome, everyone. Amen. Glory be to God. It's about that time for us to begin our Bible study. 7.30. Amen. Dear loving Father, we thank you for this time, for this beautiful day, oh God. We thank you for another day to worship you, dear Lord. Another day, oh God, to get a hold of you, oh God, in your word, to share your word, to live your word, to love your word. We ask, God, that you bless at this very time, oh God, as you have been throughout the day. Let your word go forth, oh God, and find a lodging place in the hearts of men and women and all those listening, oh God, that they may receive what you will have them to, apply it to their lives, building your kingdom, oh God, in Jesus Christ's wonderful name we pray, amen, 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 welcome everyone, glory be to God, it's a beautiful day here in Dallas, Texas. And we'll be touching on transformation, transformation. I um, was asking God what uh, 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 I should move on to the next uh, subject matter in his word. And he, I believe the Lord dealt with me about the things that are changing in this world and things that are going on in this world and um, things are changing, things are transforming and people change and people transform. And so spiritually speaking, there's also another transformation there. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's new. He's made new. He's changed. Old things are passed away. So the earthly house of our tabernacle is dissolved. The earthly mindset, the earthly ways, the earthly uh, demeanor, the earthly behavior is changed. It says, behold, all things are become new. So in theology and religious studies, a change of heart in man uh, uh, by which disposition, okay, his nature, okay, his character, that's what changes that individual, his nature, his character changes, his temper changes, he's a new creature, those old things are passed away, so those things change, his character, his temper, his outlook on life, his mood, okay, those things change in an individual, he's transformed, okay, and he's conformed, to the divine image of God, meaning he takes on uh, the way of the mind of Christ of how God thinks about life, of how God thinks about uh, 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 loving others and things of that nature and being compassionate. The divine nature comes upon that individual, okay? And he changes from enmity, okay? He changes from hostility. He changes from hate, okay? And he changes to holiness and love okay and so a lot of us we know what we used to be okay we know what we used to be and we know what we became in christ jesus and it makes it easier for us to answer the question of who we are in christ jesus it makes it real easy for us to know who we are in christ jesus in Romans 7, 17, Paul knew who he was. And he knew uh, sin's approach because he was enlightened by the Spirit of God. He says, now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He says, now then, it is no more I that do it, no more him that does it. Okay, so he knew who he was. He had a clear picture of who he was the thing that were taking place possibly in his life and where the source is coming from uh, by his actions, okay? He said, but sin that dwelleth in me. And when you're changing Christ Jesus, you're transformed in Christ Jesus, you can get down to the source of certain matters that hinder you 
okay, and trip you up and so-called uh, have you lag behind, okay, when you're walking with God. It'll show you, God will show you and reveal it to you. So transformation in Christ Jesus will shed light on your past, okay? It'll shed light, meaning the things in your past, why you did what you did when you did them in your past. When you get saved, you realize, okay, the reason I did those things was because I was undone. I was not saved. I was a heathen. I was uh, serving the enemy of this world. And you clearly understand that. And uh, Christ will shed light on your present time where you're at now. Okay. In him. Also, where you're headed in Christ Jesus. Okay. And beyond being physical, uh, us being physical beings in a material world, which we are, we're physical beings in a material world. We are uniquely special spiritual beings who are, okay, here for a reason and here for a purpose. We're here for a reason and we are here for a purpose. The book Ecclesiastes uh, touches on some of the changes, some of the transformations, some of the seasons in uh, um, chapter 3. It touches that, on some of that, where it says, to everything there is a season. To everything there's a season, meaning it's temporarily, it's going to come and go, okay? Uh, but in that time, we have to be enduring. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. So why this thing is going on in the world, whatever is going on or in your life, whatever is going on, it says in a time to every purpose under the heaven. So there's purpose behind things that transpire in your life. There's purpose behind things that transpire in others' lives, in children's lives, in adults' lives. It's just purpose, 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 constant purpose. Don't ever forget about that. Good, bad, indifferent, beneficial, non-beneficial, okay? There is always purpose. There's purpose here. So, to everything, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, where we reside, under heaven, okay? A time to be born and a time to die. Without a doubt, we checked in here, we got to check out. No two ways about it. No need to get upset about that. Um, I uh, really disturbing. I, I was watching a documentary on something, and this lady, she chose, she wrote out her will, and she uh, went through the whole procedure. She was planning to live forever, and she had her body frozen, and they actually froze this lady. And so she thinks she's going to get thought out when the time comes, when uh, whatever date she had on, on the documentation. But people want to live forever. Understand uh, there is a, a period at the end of our name. And it's okay as you're walking with God. It's okay. So a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up. Okay? That which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. So things that are happening right now and things that have happened over the years, the, the Bible definitely explains and has clued us in for years about what transpires here on earth. And it's life-changing, it's a different season, and it's transformation, okay? A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. Okay, so when God is building us up, okay, it may be kind of rough for us because sometimes we don't agree with how God does things. We don't agree with how God uh, molds us. We don't agree with how God transforms us, okay, and prods us and urges us, okay, to move forward closer to him. But we should understand that it's for our benefit. I try to have the mindset that anything that happens to me that seems to be uh, conflicting or bad or somewhat uh, disparaging, I try to find a good in that. I always trying to be a good finder. Okay, so in this transformation, uh, you being a servant of Christ, be a good finder. Always trying to find the good out of a bad situation. Don't be a complainer. I compel you. Don't be a complainer or a whiner. 
either find a solution or be a good finder. So this transformation, this change, okay, this all things are become new allows us to participate in building the kingdom of God. So you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Guess what? You get to be another brick in the wall. You get to be another brick in the building. You get to be another piece, okay, of the kingdom of God that helps build the kingdom of God. That's always going on and that ball keeps rolling picking up full steam constant transformation constant seizing constant change okay so realize in this day and age during this troubling times all nations are transforming the way business is done now has changed it has transformed the way we communicate the way we come in contact with people has changed it has transformed and guess what understand it is only for a season. So people are trying to find ways to get things done in tandem, okay, and get things done accurately, okay, and why building the kingdom of God at the same time. Transformation, okay, allows us to evolve and develop gradually. And we will, okay, when you become <laughs> when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I want folks out there that are listening, please share uh, 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 this YouTube link here uh, uh, and Facebook link. Okay, so when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, the devil looks at you differently and says, now this person is a more complex form, okay, but they're still the same individual. There's still this, you're still the same individual, the devil says, but you're more complex now. You're more complex because you have Christ with you. So the enemy just can't come at you because you've been changed now. First Peter 2 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, odd, irregular, okay, different in us, okay, if you're transformed and you're changed in Christ, we are supposed to be different individuals than the world. Our walk, our talk, our the way we our body language, the way we carry ourselves, our thinking, our mannerisms, okay? Amen. We're supposed to be totally different. We're supposed to stand out in a crowd, even if we have if I have the same if a man next to me has the same uh, uh, pants and shirt on as I do, and we're matching with clothes, folks spiritually should see something different if he's not serving God. They should still, I've had people come up to me, and you, I'm sure you've had also. They probably ask you, what church do you go to? They ain't even asked you your name yet. Because guess what? They know you've been changed. They know you have been transformed, okay? And they know you're walking with God. So, and you know, there are opportunities to transform. Uh, in my earlier days as growing up, I was offered opportunities to be saved and turn them down. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, the rich young ruler did basically the same thing. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Okay. He already had treasure on earth. He was already rich. He just didn't have treasure in heaven. Okay? So here's this opportunity for this man to be transformed in Christ Jesus. And he says, and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, he rejects Christ. And a lot of people reject Christ and they'll never find out who they really are or their God-given purpose while here on earth, you know. Um, you know, if you're going to wander around in the wilderness, at least wander around with the map. The guy didn't want his map. The guy didn't want Jesus Christ. He's just going to wander around with his riches on earth. Take Christ with you wherever you go. So when we take steps to let go of things 
uh, that no longer serve us, that are self-serving externally, internally, and embrace our God-given possibilities, life becomes you know, more joyful, more fulfilling, okay, because we let things go, okay? The change we seek begins with us changing. The transformation we seek begins with us transforming, okay? Allowing God to transform us, transform us. It begins with transformation, you know? And we can look at these different seasons of change here. A time to weep, Ecclesiastes 3, 4, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There will be death and there will be shouting, okay, dancing and rejoicing, okay? There will be weeping. There will be tears, okay? But there'll be times of laughter just as well. These things have to happen and have to take place, okay? We've been informed of these things, so we should not be surprised of these things. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So when you become a new creature, some people in Christ Jesus, some people will walk out of your life, okay? When you become a new creature in Christ Jesus and you've been transformed and you've been changed, you'll walk out of some other people's life also. You'll wanna get away from that environment that you're in. You know, transforming can be a painful experience but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was definitely glad when they said that. So during the transformation, yeah, there's people you have to let go and things you have to uh, change. And it can, the enemy, actually, the enemy wants to make it seem like it's painful and difficult. Okay. But when you know the end, like David said, when you know the end, he said, I'd rather uh, uh, be a gatekeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked. You know, when you know the end, it's easier to step away. Ecclesiastes 3, 7. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Uh, we, a lot of us probably need to work on that. It's part of us transforming and changing. It's better for us to keep quiet sometimes. Sometimes things don't fall out of our face as we would like them to. And it can be offensive or awkward than some real quiet cricket moments uh, when words are misspoken or underspoken or overspoken or taken out of context. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war, definitely a time of war. Okay, and a time of peace, time of peace, time of love, time of hate. Those things will happen. But when you're transformed, you will love. Okay, and you will not hate. Okay, now you will eschew evil because you're walking with the Lord. So, in that context, hatred, yes, I hate evil. I'm totally against it. No, no love for it. Okay, when you transform, you'll find love, you'll find power, you'll find wisdom. Okay, that will light up your heart. So, during these times, um, Remember, always remember that, hey, this is a transforming time. This is a changing time. This is a time. This is a season. And this season will pass. It has to pass. When will it pass? We do not know. We do not know when this season will pass at all. Okay? We don't know when it'll pass at all. And we have to be really strong. We have to be really strong in all of this. We have to... Uh, continue to walk with God. Continue to know that we're unique and God has designed us in a way, okay, fit for Him. And it may not seem fit for us, but we'll get used to the outfit that God fits us with. We will get used to that, okay? Definitely get used to that. And, you know, know this, that you becoming new and you participating uh, with God and in God, you are... You're an heir to the kingdom of God. You've been transformed. You've been changed, okay? And there is no substitute. There is no options, and we have to have that type of mindset. There's not another option, meaning there's, there's, I don't need to go back to the world. There's no options. I'm serving God. And we can make it through this whole situation, okay, with God, in God. Okay, he's a constantly uh, transforming lives, saving people, redeeming people, strengthening individuals, 
and strengthen our mind. If you feel weak right now, which a lot of people uh, do, uh, I was talking to a man and just feels like everything's just crumbling down on him. And I, I told him, I shared with him, God is not done with you. God is everything the enemy has taken from you. God will give it all back to you. Okay. God is like that. God is a giving God. God is a loving God. God is a prospering God. Okay. And he desires for us, okay, to be new creatures in Christ Jesus. And he desires us to alter and to be agile, okay, and to fit in his hand the way he desires to use us as a tool in his hand during certain times and certain events, okay. We need to be looked at as a, when the enemy sees us as different and a complex individual. When the enemy sees us, he needs to see that God is walking with us, okay, and not without. That makes it easier for him and us very vulnerable and others very vulnerable if God is not walking with them, okay? Or if you don't have the Holy Ghost, the enemy is really going to try to attack you and fill your head with all kinds of things that that don't need to be there in your mind. You have to know that you've been changed. You have to know that you've been redeemed. If you've accepted, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to know, okay, that you've been born again once you said, Jesus Christ, come into my life and ask him to forgive you of your sins. You're peculiar people. So there's opportunities in serving God. And even during this time, I've seen blessings after blessing after blessing, and I shared with the church this weekend, I've seen God bless folks over and over. It, to some folks, it doesn't even seem like there is an issue in the world because God is moving in their life. He's moving in their life. He's active in their life, and it should be like that for those that serve God. The same way with the children of Israel when they were in the land of Goshen and they were in Egypt, it seemed like nothing changed. They were just in slavery. But as far as provision, as far as diseases, nothing happened to them. Things weren't happening to them. And the plagues, nothing was happening to them. It was all happening to Pharaoh and his people. Those that were disobedient towards God, or had no uh, way of serving God and didn't, know, uh, didn't want to let the children of Israel go. And they weren't thinking about serving God. They had their own gods, excuse me. They had their own gods. They didn't want to serve the God of Israel. They had no idea, okay, what the God of Israel would have done for them if they had turned to him. But instead, they didn't know what they had. All they knew is they had slaves. But transformation and change and season, know that this is a season. This is a season of change. So while you go through what you go through, find the opportunity, okay? Know it's temporarily, okay? Know it's only temporarily, and know that you are a child of the king, okay? You're a peculiar people, chosen generation, a royal priesthood, okay? A holy nation, okay? A peculiar people, okay? That should show forth praises to him who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Amen. Bless you. I love you. Be looking for our service this Thursday at 730. Um, reach out to us. Facebook, YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Follow us. Support the work. But more so, support the kingdom of God. Support the kingdom of God and you will support the work in other works. And you will be a good steward. Amen. Love you. And richly bless you. Transformation. That's the word I got. Transformation. And Lord, another two words. Lord, don't move about self-development. We need to develop ourselves. So transformation and self-development. Amen. I love you and God richly bless you. Amen.